Welcome back. I'm so excited that you can make it for another video. In the previous video, we learned how to move a simple animation across the screen by increasing the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Now the problem becomes that most of the time in your iPad apps or your iPhone apps, you want the user to be able to interact with those objects on the screen. So in this video, we're going to learn how to move an object on the screen by touching it with our finger. Now it sounds complicated, but it isn't actually that much work to do. So here we go. Now I've already got the smiley image located inside of my asset folder so that we can work with it today. Now I want to introduce the variable called smiley so that I can use that variable to store the image and place it on my screen. So let's go into our app main and load that image onto the screen. So smiley is equal to view add bracket quotation mark images slash smiley dot png quotation mark comma. We're going to locate it at 100 for now. And we're going to bracket that and we're going to semicolon that. And we'll come back to that. We're actually going to edit that in a little bit later. In order to make this work, we're actually going to be turning our image of Smiley into a button because a button has three functions to it. It can recognize when it's being pushed, it can recognize when it's being moved, and it can recognize when the user is taking their finger off of the button. And we need that move feature in order to move our smiley guy around on the screen. So we're going to introduce the button. So we'll call him smiley action and we're going to introduce some new variables called ID, event, X, and Y. Now you'll notice I'm not putting a semicolon here because this is a button we actually need to give it some button code to tell it what to do when we're actually running one of the three events, being pushed, being moved, or being let go. So we will skip the semicolon. We're going to actually use the curly bracket to contain the information, the code. And we're going to say if the event is equal to two. Now, I said there's three types of events. The push is event one, the move is event two, and the let go of the button is event three. So by saying if the event is equal to two, we're saying that it's being moved, if the button is being moved. And you'll notice event was declared up here. So if the button is being moved, this is what we want it to do. We need to center the image to the new X and Y coordinates that you're moving your finger. So as you, you push the button down and you move it, your X and Y coordinates of that image is being relocated. And we want the image to be centered to the new location of wherever you move it to. Sounds complicated, but it's not. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a new variable called smiley new X to reference the new X coordinates of the smiley image. What we're going to do is take the X coordinate of the button, so wherever the button is being located, and we're going to subtract from that the width of the smiley divided by 2. Oops, smiley width divided by 2. And what that'll do is say, take the width of the smiley and divide it by 2 and that'll find halfway and subtract that from your X coordinate and that will do the centering widthwise. Now you should notice right away big red underline smiley width has not been defined, it's not been introduced so we need to come up here and we need to introduce the variable smiley width. Now you should have figured out that if we want to center it width-wise, we probably want to center it height-wise to our finger. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to introduce a new variable called smiley new y for the new y coordinate. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take our y coordinate and we're going to take our smiley height, divide that by 2, 
I'm just going to close off this bracket here, even though I'm not done, just so that it'll stop um, red eye underlining. Now again, smiley height is red underlined, so I need to introduce the variable smiley height. And we'll stick one more close bracket there, just to close off up here. Now that's gone there. Okay. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute. I know what smiley height is. I know what smiley width is. But I haven't actually told the program what smiley height and smiley width are. And you have to define that. You have to explain to the program what that variable is actually meant to do. So let's go into our app main. And let's define smiley width and smiley height. We have to tell the app what it is. So we're going to use the API view get width smiley. So we're getting the width of smiley. And we're going to store that value inside of smiley width so that we can use it later. We want to do the exact same thing with the height. So we want to store inside the variable smiley height the height of the image stored inside of Smiley. All right. So now this actually has a number to work with, but we're not done yet. We need to relocate the actual image to the new coordinates. And we did that in the previous video. We have to tell it to show the image at the new XY coordinates. So we want to show the image smiley, and we want to show it at the new X coordinate, smiley new X, and the new Y coordinate, smiley new Y. When it's done showing the new image, we want it to return to what it was doing before. So return bracket zero bracket semicolon. Notice that I put that outside of the event move. So if it's being moved, do this. When it's not being moved anymore, return to what the program was normally doing. Okay, And I discovered that although I've been putting brackets sometimes around my zero, you don't actually need the bracket there. You can just leave it like this as well, and it will do the exact same thing. All right. So we're getting closer to being done. It's moved the image, centered it to where it was, and returned to what it was doing. Now, I said earlier that uh, we would come back to this piece of code right here. Right now, this is just basically telling the computer to show the image at, at these coordinates, and that's about it. We need to actually tell it to activate the smiley action code. So after the coordinates, we're going to say that there's some code attached to this, and it's smiley action. So we'll add the image at these coordinates, and that image will have the smiley action code, which turns it into a button. All right, comma, a one, I hate to say it, I'm not really sure what that one does there, but you have to have it. Um, it's the ID code. What you can do, if you know what that means in the comment section, I would really appreciate a nice explanation so that my students and anybody else learning code will know exactly what that one does. So we press F5 and run the program, and there's our smiley face on the screen. But it's not moving. In the last video, we told it to increase the x and y coordinates by 1 within the timer. But in this case, we said if we move the button, then we wanted to move the image as well. So let's try it. Press and hold, and we'll drag it. And take a look at that. We now have a moving image. There we go. So now you can create an app where users can interact with your image and move it around on the screen. Now it doesn't do anything fancy yet, but in the upcoming videos, you'll see how to make that even more interactive. Okay, I can't wait to see what you come up with, and we will see you in the next video.